50,000 people used to live here. Now it's a ghost town. Hello and welcome to today's video. So we are exploring Chernobyl, Pripyat, the woodpecker and other areas from the infamous Chernobyl nuclear disaster. Uh, this is a full unedited video. Uh, I was going to make a shortened down vlog version of this but I thought I'd just take everybody along for the ride. Some people aren't privileged enough to go and explore this, this place and uh, this is a POV experience uh, with a bit of vlogging inside it as well. Um, it's going to be a long video, but bear with it. It's a full experience tour of Chernobyl and surrounding areas. So uh, make sure you follow. Uh, if you don't get the chance to ever go to the Chernobyl site, maybe they've cut it off, or you just aren't lucky enough to get there. Um, you know, this is just the closest experience you can get. Uh, make sure you share this with your friends. Anybody that wants to go to Chernobyl, this would be great to uh, to see. And. Uh, yeah, check out uh, stalker right, underscore seven on Instagram. He was our tour guide. Um, his name is Andrew. Uh, the, absolutely um, excellent guy. Uh, get in contact with him if you want to book a tour. Um, um, if not, enjoy this video. Or, uh, I hope it's of some use. Fresh, and uh, I hope I didn't swear too much. So enjoy, guys. And, um... Yeah, I'm not really going to edit this video. It's just going to be raw footage, apart from the intro. Um, just so you can you can skip along and it's sort of experience it yourself. Yeah, I hope you enjoy guys. <laughs> so, device has two buttons, left and right on the top, so press right button please, to switch it on. A little bit stronger, okay? A little bit stronger. A little bit stronger. Not too strong. Oh my, you broke it. <laughs> just does the cost like training for you just to react. Yeah. Too strong. Uh -huh, okay. Okay. So when you uh, when the digits are blinking on the screen, it means that the dosimeter collects the statistic data and the error rate for the measurement is higher than twenty percent. So we must wait two minutes or less enough for this device to collect the statistics and make the mathematics. On your screen now, 0 0.10, 0 0.15, even 0 0.20 micro zeros per hour. It's normal background radiation in Kyiv. The danger level is higher than 0 0.30. When the dosimeter sees such level, it will switch on the alarm, will be beeping, and your screen will be blinking in red. In the Chernobyl zone, you can see different level of radiations. You can see areas with normal level of radiations, lower than 0 0.30. You can see areas with danger level of radiations everywhere, for example, in the Pripyat city, and you can see extra danger level of radiations, for example, near the hotspots. But it's normal situations only for Chernobyl zone. First red LED blinking under the screen. It means that we stay in the gamma measurement mode. It's our main mode. If you press right button one more time, press it, please. You go to the second mode, second blinking red LED under the screen. It's a mode for accumulated dose. Accumulated dose is the quantity of radiation that our body collects during the trip. By Ukrainian law, we must collect less than one millisiever per year. So, if you divide one on 365 days in a year, you can calculate a day's dose. It must be less than 0 0.003. For your information, such level of accumulated dose we can collect in Kyiv. It, uh, it depends from the locations we stay or we live during two or three days. Your accumulated dose for today absolutely depends from the locations you will see today and you can check this value in the end of the day and compare to 0 0.003. Next press, we go to the third mode, third blinking red LED under the screen. It has a little bit different background. Why? Because this mode for better radiation measurement, as we know, better radiation is much more weaker kind of radiation compared to the gamma radiation. It's not so dangerous for us like a gamma radiation. So you can measure this kind of radiation or you can skip the step by your opinion. Next press, we go to the fourth mode. This mode without blinking red LEDs, but with blinking digits on the screen. It's a time mode, it's a quantity of minutes that your device is working. For example, blinking one, it means that your device is working during one minute. Blinking 10, it means that your device is working during 10 minutes and so on. And if you press this button one more time, you go to the last mode, to the funniest mode of this device because it's a glow. 
Regale, I don't know why the Zimeter must have clock, but it already has it, yes, it's a funny. And it sets absolutely wrong, so don't check your clocks on the device's clocks, it sets absolutely wrong. And if you press this button one more time, you go on the cycle to the first mode. So we have five modes. First mode for gamma radiation measurement, it's our main mode. Next mode for accumulated dose, you can see this value in the end of the day and compare to 0 0.003. Next mode for better radiation measurement, you can measure this kind of radiation or you can skip the step. Next for uh, mode, it's um, time mode, quantity of minutes and the last mode, it's ROM clock. If you switch to the first mode and take your device in the right hand, you have three left sides. From up to down is located Geiger Miller counter. So if you want to check your clothes, boots, belongings, maybe measure any kind of object inside the Chernobyl zone, just put the zimeter much more closer to the object you want to measure by this left side. Left side, not top. Left, not top. Uh, please don't take off the leather case. It protects the zimeter from the contaminations and absolutely transparent for gamma radiations. If you want to switch your device off, just press right button and hold it for 5 seconds. Your device will switch off, your statistics go to the zero. So I don't advise to do this because the battery is enough for all day long. You can switch it on now or you can switch it on on the checkpoint decat key and leave it on all day long. And after the trip, you uh, give back your devices to your guide. His name is Andrew. He, see, he stays outside. Everything clear about Geiger account? So we are waiting maybe 5, maybe 7 minutes for two people from United States, if they will not come, we will start our trip without them. The road will take about one hour and half an hour. On the road, we will have a stop on the petrol station where you can go to smoke, go to toilet, buy some water or coffee or take five minutes rest. On the checkpoint decat, you will have to show your electronic tickets one more time. So don't go pull them. And on the checkpoint decat, you will have to put on clothes and cover your arms, cover your legs and show your passports one more time. You guys are today. Everything clear? Yeah. Ah, uh, I forgot. Uh, by the way, we will see a movie about Chernobyl disaster. Друзья, готовы мы практически поездки в Чернобыльскую зону отчуждения. Дорога займет приблизительно. Okay, so we've been on the way for about half an hour, 45 minutes now. We're just stopping for a quick uh, pee break at the petrol station. We're, I think, 40 kilometers out until we get there. Um, I'll probably leave out the transit to. The checkpoint and then try and carry on filming there i'm not permitted to film at the checkpoint but i will try and get what i can of the process of going into chernobyl um through like the pripyat border and stuff like that so um yeah let's see how it, how it takes us hopefully i can get the good footage but um it is what it is up cooling system in reactor number four but the routine safety drill went horribly wrong a nuclear reactor is like a giant steam engine Uranium fuel rods react and produce a massive amount of heat. That converts water into steam, which drives huge turbines to generate electricity. Control rods are inserted in between the uranium. I have deal with the rest of bureaucracy procedure. After this, I will come back and ask you to take your passports and your tickets and follow me closer to the building of the checkpoint where your documents will be checked by the police officer. Or the second option, I will ask you to form a small line near the bus and wait for me with the police officer and then he will check your documents near the bus. First variant or second one actually doesn't matter because then we will cross the border of the zone together and then will be a last second part of this procedure. Uh, right after we will cross the border you must show, not give, only show your tickets to the lady or gentleman near the table second time and they will give you your personal Geiger counter. Uh, that Geiger counter is completely useless for us today because it's only for the statistic for Chernobyl Exclusion Zone State Agency. It won't show you any digits because any radiation levels around you because it have no display and of course it won't start to beep when you will be somewhere near the hotspot. So it's only for the statistic for Chernobyl Exclusion Zone State Agency. Unfortunately for us if we're gonna lose this device, it will be a huge penalty, 400 euros. So I beg you, please be extremely careful with these tiny devices. Better put them somewhere in your pockets or in your backpacks. Of course, it's strictly forbidden to take any photos of police officers, soldiers or buildings of the checkpoint according to Ukrainian law. We'll be allowed to take photo only of armored vehicle, which will be to the right before the checkpoint. Uh, also, in a few minutes, I will bring you a special paper. In that paper, you must put your first name and second name in the first column and two signs in both other columns. It's for the safety rules. We will discuss all the safety rules right after we will cross the border and start our excursion in Chernobyl Exclusion Zone.
Дамы и господа, мы с вами приближаемся к КПП Детятки. Это наши главные ворота в зону отчуждения. Всех вечером на КП. Строго запрещено делать фотографии полиции, солдат и зданий КПП. Можно фотографировать, например, БРДМчик, который сейчас справа от нас. Также через пару минут принесу вам листочек, где нужно будет написать имя, фамилию. Первая колонка, две подписи во второй, ну, подпись во второй и подпись в третьей колонке. Checkpoint number one before we head into, um, into the main area. Let's see if there's any radiation here. So you put your left side on to detect. This is a benchmark figure. So we're on 10 on the outside of the uh, exclusion zone. When we get inside, we compare the numbers. Immerhin günstiger als in Deutschland. Aber da ist doch die Und da ist noch jetzt die Handlung dabei, was er doch echt We'll be waiting for our guide to come through. I think when we get to the 10 kilometer exclusion zone, that's when we get the. Uh... Well, they've got them around the net. Oh, have they? The green things. Oh, I don't know. He's got to be only taking a certain. Um, 
I just ran, I just looked around the for one of the one I seem to have looked out there. We've been issued um, government regulated Geiger counters that keep track of your um, daily allowance of radiation that you're able to take, as well as the one from the tour guide. But this one actually has a meter and a reading. So as I push it on the left side of stuff, I can test to see the level of radiation. So like on the ground, items that I see and so on. Um, whereas this one is purely to keep track for, I guess, statistics and information. But we're gonna, I think we wait here for a little bit before we move on to the 10 kilometer exclusion zone and into Pripyat itself. So I'll, I'll, leave, I'll leave the footage for now. And when it picks back up on the tour, I will continue the footage. So cheers guys. Раз, раз, раз. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning to all of you, and I'm glad to welcome you in Chernobyl Exclusion Zone. It's a huge area, approximately 2,600 square kilometers. From this moment, you are my guest. But first of all, as I promised you before the checkpoint, now it's time to talk about the safety rules. They are quite old, boring, most of them were born in 1986, but anyway, we must respect and obey them while we are here in the zone. So the first one. In Chernobyl Exclusion Zone is strictly forbidden to smoke. Forbidden to smoke everywhere, except few places near the trash cans, or near the special text which you will find somewhere on the random surfaces, on the walls, fences and so on. <coughs> it's smoke, place for smoking, area for smoking, or at least middle-sized feature of cigarette somewhere. If you're not sure or 100% you're allowed to smoke somewhere or not, please better ask me. My name is Andrew, and as usual I'm telling yes, you can start your cigarette, but if you will see some another tour guides, police patrol, please immediately hide your cigarette and then when they will leave in a few minutes you will be able to continue next one please do, please don't try to gather any berries mushrooms giant token pineapples bananas all fruits and veggies you will be my you will be my, maybe so lucky to find today here in this zone because most of them are simple radioactive waste if you will eat them will be a huge chance for you to get some serious troubles with your stomach up to cancer so please be careful by the same reason please don't drink any water from the local source such as ponds, lakes, rivers and so on. Only that water which is already with you in the bottles or for example on your way back you will buy somewhere in a local shop uh, on the checkpoint Dityatka. Uh, all juices, all lemonades, all types of meal in the local canteen which is only 500 meters away from the power plant for us nowadays are absolutely safe to drink and to eat so don't worry about this and keep it in mind. Please don't put your belongings on the ground in the dust and so on, especially your cameras, backpacks, bottles with your water, your snacks, cell phones and so on. Because in 10 km zone some particles are still flying from one place to another, carried by wind. 
and will be a chance to contaminate your belongings. On your way back, you will pass through three radiation control frames. By the way, by the same reason, please don't sit anywhere except your seats in the bus and your seats which you will choose for yourself in the canteen. So, about these radiation control frames. Uh, they are some kind of a huge Geiger counter, but not to measure some objects around you which are interesting for you, no. To measure exactly your body and your belongings. Uh, first one will be in the canteen, second one on the middle checkpoint, some kind of a border between 10 and 30 km zones, and the last frame in uh, on the checkpoint Dityatki, that one which, which we just successfully passed. So, when, if this frame will start to beep uh, alarm system, you will hear the same alarm from your Geiger counters, but a little bit later, closer to the 10 km zone, closer to the power plants. It will mean that your body is partly or completely uh, more contaminated than it should to be. And of course, then for you will be forbidden to enter canteen, leave 10 or 30 km zone. Depends which frame started to be. So please be careful, don't touch any rusty things and any materials which will be covered with a few layers of dust. Next one. Please don't eat anything on the open air, but you're free to drink your water slash juice slash anything except alcohol uh, anywhere in the zone, even near the second shelter. Today, for example, you will be approximately 250 and or 300 maximum meters away from the second shelter, the closest allowed for us legal distance for the guests of the zone. Uh, even there, you're free to drink your water because it's completely safe. Your water, as usual, is in the bottles and your water is not in the contact with the ear. A uh, few seconds before you will eat your snack, this snack will be in the contact with the ear. That's why to, sorry, that's why to eat something is dangerous, to drink safe, so please keep it in mind. Uh, the last one is the most sad rule for us. Since 2012, it's strictly forbidden to visit any abandoned buildings in Chernobyl exclusion zone, especially in Chernobyl 2, especially Pripyat city. Because if some bricks will fall on somebody's head, only your guide will be responsible for this. Not only according to my words, according to the safety rules you just signed, and according to the Ukrainian law in general. So please be careful and uh, watch out. Move slowly in this zone, it's no need to hurry up. Uh, because there is a chance to fall in a sewer, because as usual sewer, uh, uh, sewer holes, they are opened. Mm, there is a chance to, I don't know, to be, to broke your leg, to break your hand, uh, break your fingers and so on. Uh, unfortunately, Chernobyl exclusion zone, it's not a sim park. And right now it's quite hot outside and there is a chance to meet up with a snake. Uh, simple one or a viper so please be careful we have no medicine against the poison snakes in chernobyl town again please be careful especially with the snakes that's all about the safety rules and i'll be the same information but in russian don't worry you won't miss anything today Добрый день, господа. Рад приветствовать вас в Чернобыльской зоне отчуждения. На самом деле огромная территория порядка 2600 квадратных километров она занимает можно только возле мусорных бачков, либо возле специальных надписей, которые можно найти э, в различных местах, особенно ну, на курилках, да, особенно на заборах, на стенах и так далее. Место для курения, зона для курения это звучит, либо хотя бы изображение сигареты такого среднего размера. Потому что особенно в десятке есть риск того, что частицы до сих пор носятся ветром с одного места на второе. И есть риск того, что вы неудачно их соберете на эти объекты и попросту сделаете их грязными. Вот, поэтому, пожалуйста, аккуратно, аккуратно, по той же причине не садимся никуда, кроме как места в нашем автобусе, либо же места, которые вы выберете для себя в столовой, потому что можно заморозить. So uh, we've just entered the 30 kilometer exclusion zone, the first zone that you pass through. The most dangerous and most contaminated one, it's 10 kilometer zone. Since 1986, since catastrophe happened, that area is contaminated with several types of radionuclides, radioactive elements, from the most safe nowadays to the most dangerous even nowadays. So for example, radioactive iodine, decay period only up to 7 days. So right now it's almost impossible to find, uh, to find some wild radioactive iodine in Chernobyl exclusion zone. When catastrophe happened, it was exactly iodine in cesium-137 catastrophe. Nowadays, iodine completely disappeared from the zone. It's possible to find it only in a few labs which are still in use in Chernobyl. So, right now, it's only cesium-137 catastrophe. Like, second danger level, it's cesium and strontium. They are the most popular type of protective elements for Chernobyl exclusion zone. Uh, for them, it's quite difficult to kill you. They are only poisoning your body. Uh, they are accumulating 
know, in your flesh and in bone. your bones. You can tell them from to keep you rid of the soddy years. The ground is to tell you the next. If you're a simple worker, you're tasked to fix something, maybe replace something uh, after the previous winter season. For you, it's no need to dig this something out from the ground and disturb some radioactive particles, which are right now 30 35 centimeters under the ground, because each radioactive particle sits deeper and deeper in the soil layer on one centimeter a year. So please join me outside. I'm 17 now, so we were on 10 before, so slight increase, nothing major. Water and the most important electricity with the same time. That's why only some buildings are still in use. It's Kirova Street, our main exit or entrance from Chernobyl uh, in the way of 10 km zone. And actually Main Street, on the Main Street to the left, right now you will see um, police headquarters. Right after the police headquarters, next white building uh, will be a local school. Actually it was a local school, nowadays it's a local hospital. Because all of us, we are personal of A category. This letter means that we are working and living, of course, during our shifts in high ionizing radiation levels. And for us it's obligatory to care about our health um, a little bit more than for other people in Ukraine. To the right will be a small fire station and monument, and monument which is dedicated to the firefighters, to be more correct, to the first two squad of firefighters. They were the first liquidators. These people came to eliminate standard fire, as they were told. Of course, at the time, nobody didn't know nothing about the radiation text on the sign for those who saved the world. Uh, these people came without any protective gear and of course they were literally exposed. Most of them died in the next several months in hospital number 6, which is in Moscow. The hospital at the time was only one single place in a huge Soviet Union where people knew not how to heal these liquidators or something like this. They knew how to help them less suffer before their death because they came with the latency period. Latency period is time when your body can't understand what's going on. Like some new changes inside of me. Are they good for me or are they bad? I don't know for sure. So I will wait. Uh, your body will wait from several days to several weeks, depends from, depends from the dose you get. Uh, after this, on your skin will appear something uh, like a red dots. These dots are radioactive burns and unfortunately they are quite painful and depends from the dose you get, they can eat your flesh down to the bones. Of course, it's also quite painful procedure. Uh, you will lose all your hair from your body and your organs from the weakest ones will start to shut down one by one. So the word latency period automatically means that you don't. So we're now approaching the next checkpoint where we have to do uh, passport checks and uh, ticket checks again. Um, he says that the checks depend on the police's mood at the time and who's on shift. So uh, we'll see how that goes. I'll try and get some footage if I can.
Soviet maps. Uh, here was uh, just a summer children camp in sunshine. According to the several maps nowadays, the same information. So basically, you're free to check my words. Actually, here was a, uh, here wasn't a summer children camp. Here was a secret military base, Dugan. Even this road, it's also a secret object. Uh, part of this road was used as an airfield for the smallest military aviation. Uh, when we will reach to the beginning of an airfield, I will warn you, and you will see that most trees, which are growing closer to the road, they are much younger than in other trees in the forest. Because until 1986 there was a buffer zone, small one, from 10 to 15 meters maximum from the both sides of the road to avoid any chance for the planes to broke to harm their wings somehow, the most important part. Anyway, Chernobyl 2, as known as secret military base Duga, as known as Russian Woodbecker or I.O. the Moscow, too many names for such a small base. Population was only 1,900 and so the people. Who are they? Soldiers, officers and their family members. Soldiers always were used only as a guard for this town. Officers were the main employers. Uh, about their wives. For them was allowed to work everywhere. In Chernobyl, original city of Chernobyl I mean. In Pripyat city and here in Chernobyl too. Most of them of course decided to search for a job closer to their husbands. And most of them used to work in Chernobyl too. As doctors, nurses, teachers in the school or kindergarten for example. Chernobyl too consists from two parts, left and right one, uh, military and civilian part. Military part consists from huge antenna in the forest, command center for this antenna, headquarters, barracks for soldiers, canteen for soldiers, canteen for officers, fuel, water storages, uh, military garages and driving school for the soldiers. At the time most of them were from the village, they perfectly knew how to drive a motorcycle or tractor, but they didn't know how to drive a tank or armored vehicle, that's why driving school was there. Uh, right part consists from seven dormitories for the employers of Chernobyl too. Uh, local stadium, a fire station, local power plant which was running on the coil to burn some coil and produce some heat for this base in winter seasons especially, because according to the Soviet Union standards, each simple or secret military base must be independent from the main source of power, in our case it's Chernobyl nuclear power plant. Also local hospital, school, kindergarten, few shops, uh, even a war shop, uh, hostel, club, cinema, kindergarten, school, that's all, simple, uh, simple typical Soviet military place. Uh, right up at this hill, you will see that next few kilometers a road will be straight like an arrow. It means that we reached to our airfield. Uh, Duga. 
uh, system is so tall because of the range. Range was between four and six thousand kilometers over horizon radio location system. Uh, this technology used short waves. Uh, short waves they couldn't pass through the record your videos because nowadays it's another huge museum on the open air if we will talk only about this checkpoint. So please keep it in mind. Друзья, мы с вами приближаемся к городку Чернобыль 2. На самом деле очень много названий этой области. Чернобыль 2, русский дятел, Око Москвы или Око Москвы, как говорим мы. Вот. Ну и понятное дело, самое распространенное это кодовое название Чернобыль 2. На самом деле слишком много названий для такого маленького городка, для такой маленькой базы. Здесь проживала и работала раннего обнаружения самолетов, потому что в то время именно в то время именно самолет являлся носителем э, ядерной бомбы. В то время о ядерных ракетах, э, тем более интерконтинентальных, особо и не слышали. Они начали появляться в середине конце холодной войны. Э, суть в том, что технология была сразу принята очень радостно, но, к сожалению, не было мощностей для обсчета огромного количества информации, которая требовалась для подобной системы. Поэтому дугу отложили. И дугу начали только после того, как первый достаточно мощный компьютер с памятью всего лишь полтора мегабайта в Советском Союзе, в принципе, был изобретен в конце 59 -го года. В 60 году начинается строительство первой дуги возле Николаева, как тестовый образец, потому что именно в Николаеве находился институт, ответственный за подобный проект. Вторая дуга у нас с вами здесь, городок Чернобыль-2, тоже территория Украины, понятное дело, между 65-м и 73-м годом. И самая последняя дуга возле, возле города Комсомольск на Амуре, она была завершена в 83-м. Именно завершена, потому что через три года у нас случается самая опасная в мире техногенная катастрофа. Кто-то говорит, что США продали всю свою нефть в то время на мировой рынок, тем самым значительно понизив ее цену, тем самым Союз не получил от 40 до 60% интернациональной валюты, которую они так ждали. Именно в... So this was a top secret base that was uh, nicknamed the Red Woodpecker. No, Russian Woodpecker. And uh, they built these antennas to detect missile launches from uh, enemy countries. It, uh, it, it got up to 500, their one, but it was bouncing off the scale. I think I want to send you a link to YouTube. No. Try and show up here if you do it. Why have you got any videos? You stand at the bottom just for context, for reference. There you go, six, six foot two. <laughs> Oh yeah. Wow. Look at the symmetry. If you come down a little bit. That's impressive. 
Right, so someone's dropped their sunglasses, that's it. Just left it. Dare to leave them, don't touch it. 20,000 years later. Yeah. <laughs> the evil. <laughs> oh, the Ray Bans as well. What's the, um, what's yeah. Oh, we're not good at that. So. What do you see, boy? just kill themselves off so. Right, so this is the um, old abandoned fire station that would have like it's flooded um, would have been responsible for the the first on scene defense after the, um, the reactor core exploded Still only on 19. This is the uh, remains of an old respiratory system that presumably the firefighters would have worn during the time. Presumably, presumably there's a way we can go into this or look in. I don't want to go into into, but wow, wow! I wouldn't go up top, but look at this. Yeah, I wouldn't. Oh, wow! See the old abandoned fire station. I think we were. He said not to go in properly, didn't he, because of falling bricks, but. 
Jolly good. Modular electrical systems have been removed. What do I do in the windows? Uh, I don't know. Okay. Twenty-seven. We're slowly climbing. It smells like an antique store. Mm. So that twenty-seven is just atmospheric. So. Twenty-six. So. went through that one then. <laughs> Make your second guess now. <laughs> Certain part of the room. Hmm. Corner square. Oh, that's a. Oh, we have to. I presume this is the model of this area. So here's here's the structure that was at before. And we were down presumably that end. Come this, this is a yeah. way too much dust and shit here. Yeah, it's all cool. It's actually gone down in here. So we would That's have come out we were in that tunnel there. out and round to here. That building. You, that stuff that tree with the chimney. Oh yeah, sorry, I'm really disoriented. So that's where we are there. And I guess this is the housing complex. It's not yeah, that'll just be the for the troopers in there. Yeah. Oh yeah. Wow. Okay. Cool. I'd love to find a piano. Says, if they've each got their signs, they might have another one. Class. 
Maybe. We'll Google Translate it later. That is an L, is it? Very old can of beans. Nobody knows what this is. Также увидим три здания, которые до сих пор стоят. Они над землей и они существуют. Первое, что мы увидим после поворота перед нами, это местная администрация. Будет остановка возле детского садика, можно будет зайти внутрь, посмотреть, как там все было. И, соответственно, на другой стороне от детского садика, садика остатки местного колхоза. Здания до сих пор стоят и существуют, потому что они были сделаны из кирпича. Кирпичное здание было намного проще отмыть. Вот почему мы их сегодня с вами можем с вами увидеть. Остальные здания... It was impossible to watch these buildings, these particles, they were exactly in the walls, not on the walls. That's why they decided to destroy most private houses in village Kopachi. Nowadays, a standard private house looks like a small hill 